In this video, we're going to talk about rocket propulsion, and we're going to solve a physics problem related to it. But before we get into that, let's talk about Newton's third law of motion. For every action force, there is an equal but opposite reaction force. To illustrate it, imagine if you're ice skating, and you're holding a ball. What's going to happen if you throw the ball to the right? So if you send the ball to the right, what's going to happen? You're going to move towards the left. The force that you exert on the ball, the ball exerts the same force on you. So in order to move in one direction, you need to throw an object in the other direction. And so if you want to move in space, you have to throw matter in the opposite direction to where you want to go. So let's say if you're an astronaut in space and you have a ball in your hand. Now, if you want to propel yourself in the upward direction, you need to throw the ball in the downward direction. And so by exerting a force on a ball in the downward direction, the ball is going to push you up in the upward direction. And the same is true for rocket propulsion. So a rocket can propel itself upward by shooting out matter beneath it. So as it propels itself in space, it has to basically shoot out gas particles underneath it. And so that's going to cause the rocket to accelerate upward. It can also move in the x direction as well. So if it shoots out gas particles in this direction, it's going to feel a force that will accelerate it to the right. So how can we calculate that force? Well, let's look at an example problem that's going to help us to calculate the force that's exerted by a fluid such as a liquid or a gas. Consider this problem. What force is exerted on a block by water flowing from a hose at a speed of 25 meters per second given a mass flow rate of 4 kilograms per second. So let's say this is the block. And let's say there's a person. And a person has a hose in his hand. And with it, he shoots out water. And so that water is going to exert a force on a block. Now, because he's shooting fluid to the right, the person with the hose is going to feel an equal but opposite force that's going to propel him to the left. Now let's calculate the force that's exerted on the block by the water. Now based on Newton's second law, we know that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Perhaps you've seen this equation, V final is equal to V initial plus AT. Solve for A it's going to be V final minus V initial divided by T. So the change in velocity over the change in time is equal to the acceleration. Now momentum is mass times velocity. So the change in momentum is mass times the change in velocity. So we can replace M delta V with momentum. So the force, the net force, is really the change in momentum divided by the change in time. Now, you can describe the change in momentum as mass times the change in velocity, or you can describe it as the change in mass times a constant velocity. So therefore, we could replace delta P with delta M times V over delta T. So this gives us this equation. The force is going to equal the mass flow rate, which is the change in mass divided by the change in time, multiplied by the velocity. So that's the expression that you want to use if you want to calculate the force exerted by a fluid, be it a liquid or a gas. So the mass flow rate was given to us. It's 4 kilograms per second. As you can see, m is in kilograms, t is in seconds. And the speed of the fluid it's moving at 25 meters per second. 
So 4 times 25 will give us a force of 100 newtons. So that's the force exerted by the fluid on a block. And this is also the force that the person feels towards the left. Number two, a rocket is traveling in space. It ejects 750 kilograms of mass every minute. The velocity of the exhaust material is 85 meters per second. Calculate the forward thrust of the rocket. So let's say the rocket is traveling in this direction. And so it has a forward thrust F. And it's shooting out gaseous material towards the left. So we need to calculate this force. Now we know how to calculate the force exerted by a fluid. The force exerted by a fluid is equal to the mass flow rate of the fluid, which is delta m over delta t, multiplied by the velocity of the fluid, or the velocity of the exhaust material. So we've got to find the mass flow rate in kilograms per second. So the change in mass is 750 kilograms. And the change in time is 1 minute or 60 seconds. So if we divide 750 by 60, delta M over delta T is 12.5 kilograms per second. So the force of the fluid is going to be negative 12.5 kilograms per second multiplied by a velocity of 85 meters per second. Well, technically, this should be positive and this should be negative. Because the fluid is moving towards the left, the velocity is negative. So the force of the fluid is 1062.5. Now, we need a negative sign for that force because, based on the way we drew it, this force is directed on the negative x-axis. Now, the force of the rocket, or basically the thrust force, that's equal to negative the force of the fluid. So basically, this answer has to be positive because it's directed in the positive x-direction. So the force that propels the rocket forward is going to be positive. 1,062.5 newtons. And so that's the answer. Let's try this problem. A rocket requires a thrust of 45,000 newtons. It shoots out exhaust material at 500 meters per second. How many kilograms of fuel should be burned every minute? So let's say this is the rocket. and it requires a thrust force of 45,000 newtons. And so it's shooting out exhaust material at a speed of 500 meters per second. We need to find out how many kilograms of fuel this rocket has to burn every minute. So let's use this equation. F is equal to delta M over delta T times V. Now let's not worry about any negative signs because we just got to solve for the mass and mass is always positive. So the magnitude of F has to be 45,000. Now we're looking for the change in mass and we want to find out how many kilograms of fuel should be burned every minute. So the change in time is 60 seconds and the velocity is 500. So now it's all algebra. So 500 divided by 60 is equal to 8.3 repeating. So you could say 8.333. Now to calculate the change in mass, it's just going to be 45,000 divided by 8.333. So it's 5,400 kilograms. That's how much fuel needs to be burned every minute 